church every Sunday. Online, I am the sanctuary. Receiving a word from the Lord to uplift my spirits, but what I really need to know is, is how to make it through the week. I need to know how to handle me. Someone, please help me. Church. What's really going on? Have church. Monday to Sunday morning. Have church. Benediction is said. Please keep it real with me. Have church. Don't worry, don't fret. What's up, everybody? It's been a minute. Um, welcome to After Church with Lady Marie and Pastor Rod. Uh, just want to kind of highlight you again. We're in October. Right now, we've been very busy with so many different things. So we've kind of been dragging on this, but there's a lot of things that's happening. Remember, we have our pause and we have our bold statements that we check out. And uh, we're coming off a victory with the Lakers, which is why I'm in my Laker gear. Oh, um, I'm a LeBron James fan. We all are. And so that made us Lakers fans this year. And he won the title. We won the title. That's right. And that's all that's good. So we straight. We straight. But we're here in October, and this is the month where um, we recognize as a pretty much a country um, breast cancer, the awareness of it, and um, domestic violence. and that's influential on the colors that we have behind us, pink for um, breast cancer and purple for domestic violence. And it's real to us, cancer is real to me, um, domestic violence, which is the, really the focus of what we're gonna talk about today, is real to both of us, um, not necessarily personally within my family, my immediate family, but um, Lady Marie does have some, you know, some experience in that and we want to be very very candid and real about it we, we we are so adamantly against it it is a great issue in our country and in relationships in our in our marriages in our homes there's so much going on between abuse and molestation which i consider still violence and and then there's arguments that in in murder and, it, and it's sad because you know families should be based from love and care and everyone should have the same mentality but that's not always the case and a lot of times it's from our backgrounds and things that we've come through or just abuses in other areas like alcoholism or drugs or it, there's a number of different cases so don't let me start that but we wanted to be extremely candid today to give you first of all that God is against it that um, love is should reign in all but to even be more candid to let you know that we're not exempt from it and it's shaped our marriage it's shaped how we've done our family and um i want lady marie to kind of expound a little bit on that shaping and i, I remember one encounter we had uh I, this could really kind of shape it when we were um still dating and we were in college and we we play a lot we tussle a lot we we did at that time anyway you know just being girlfriend boyfriend but it was nothing major mm -hmm. um and one particular incident where we were, I guess, in my apartment, and, and I don't re even remember the full details of it, but we kind of got into, not necessarily, we were, I thought we were just playing, and we both thought we were just playing, and then all of a sudden, I don't remember what I did, but when I did it, it just clicked in her. It was almost like something went, and, and she didn't go crazy or anything like that. She just said, don't ever do me like that again, or or whatever it was, and, and I was like, what? I mean, I don't I don't even know we were playing. What happened? What What is this? And it, it kind of, was a light that came on and I was, and she kind of gave me some insight into some things and I was like, that's never me, never will be me. I, I, I love you. Um, I'm not a violent person. I never came from that. So I'm sorry, but it, it began to shape my, my view of it because I I'm, it just was years past it. And so we kind of made some decisions, not necessarily discussing, but you know, as to how our lives would go, that influenced my decisions on on us, on our relationship, because I didn't know. And so, um, with that being said, I want you to kind of get some insight into kind of her world and, and some things that I can't personally relate to that she helped me understand, Lady Marie. Domestic violence is really in my front door. It was something I grew up with, and it is such a mental um, battle that you go through. Uh, I've seen it, I saw it a large part of my childhood life, 
and it does affect you. You really don't know the effects of it until I, we were in situations um, like we were when we were playing and just a flashback. I did literally have a flashback at that moment when he referred, when Pastor Rod referred to the incident that he was talking about. And it wasn't an incident, we were just playing. And it just made me think, oh my God, am I involved in a relationship where this could go into I'm being hit or I'm being tossed around and we were just tussling. And I'm kind of a rough rider anyway, but those are the kind of thoughts that come to you as you're progressing into your relationships. You think, you know, I don't want to be a part of that. That was a part of my seat when I didn't even know I was seeking um, for a relationship, a long term relationship, uh, progressing into marriage that I don't want to be a come from the background that I was a part of because I saw so much detriment in that. I saw where first it was a very uh, vulnerable situation. In this case, uh, a, a woman being very vulnerable to an, a very abusive man, to watching her turning to a resentful building strength and fighting back and fighting back to the point to the detriment of us i mean because you just don't know the mentality of the abuser and you don't know how far it goes there's no it's no borders no boundary so mm -hmm. you're always on alert and that's the kind of childhood i came from i'm always on alert i remember a time when a gun was purchased in our home it was a big double barrel gun and I took it upon myself, I was very young, I was probably 11 or 12 years old when I realized that type of purchase was made in our home and I knew how my parents were and it was at any moment, anything could set an abuser off. It, you could it have the most perfect day, it seemed, but it could be a bad meal, it could be anything. And I said, I'm going to take it upon myself and hide this gun because I can't wake wow. up and realize that one of these parents are gone because mm. somebody just went off. And I did. And I remember there was an argument that broke out and I knew where the gun was hid. And they went to that closet to get that gun, but the gun was not there. And it really escalated the situation because the abuser was beginning to think that maybe um, the woman had something to do with hiding the gun. but. I didn't mean to escalate it. I just didn't want nobody to get shot or get killed. And knives, just everything was just a weapon or could, could have been used as a weapon. I remember so, I have so many memories of just different things that were done that was just, you just wouldn't imagine that a human could do to another human and still come back and say, I love you. That's another thing. They come back and they say they love you and they uh, still want to be with you, they're sorry. So it was just so many things I learned in that situation that I carried on into me pursuing my own relationships. And, and I, I think, I think it, it, it's so real because I, I remember her talking about, you know, sometimes not being able to sleep and, and not feeling secure in restrooms and things of that nature because you just never knew what was going on. And that mentality, the reason that I, I really wanted her and, and us to talk about it because that mentality was so different from my world. My world never saw anything visually, anything like that. Never had knowledge of parental, you know, uh, you know, I've, everybody has disagreements and arguments, but never anything became violent to our, to our knowledge. And so it was hard for me to handle At first, when, when, when this situation came up with us, I was kind of sort of in shock because it wasn't as pervasive or, or relevant to us as, as, a, as a country because certain things were kept in the dark. There was not the, the police security and the different live, uh, laws and things that have come into effect now as that we're so, we're so real with it, we're so, it's so relevant to us that we hear and see about it every day. And, and the mere fact that, that that's real and the trauma, I, I, I couldn't understand it. And it, 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 it brought me to a place because it made me it made me question, okay, am I able to handle this? Because actually it kind of brought me to a level of fear, not of her, but of, of, of just, I didn't, she came from that kind of background and I didn't know, you know, much about that background. So it made me start to f try to figure out, well, is something wrong with her or what, what is it or what, what comes out of it? And um, I, I just know how real it is, as, even as a pastor, 
I've, I've heard of situations and, and sometimes I'm, I, I'm, I'm counseled on, on, on different situation and, and, and things just shock me, not, not shock me that they happen. It just shocks me of the strength of the people and, and some people you would never know because they carry it so well or, or they hide it. That's a better word. They hide it so well because it's so, it's so uh, taboo in a sense. And, and, and you don't want people to know that you're dealing with certain things. And I want you to understand, like I, I made her understand that it matters. And, and, and even in, 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 in a world where we love God and we, we, we talk about, you know, the, the word of God and we teach all of the love and so on and so forth, they're real issues. Yeah that are out there. I'm talking to people now, people that I'm sure are watching this who have encountered or may be encountering. I want you to know this, number one, that, that this is not the will of God concerning you. In other words, this is not okay. It's, it's not a situation where, where, where you've done something. Uh, domestic abuse, whether it be male, female, children, or whoever's involved, is wrong. Yes. And, 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 and it, it destroys the fibers, but it, that's yet another attack of the enemy and many times it's not birthed necessarily from the immediate relationship hers and mine it's birthed from the exposure from before or how your parents came up and and things of that nature whatever it is but we wanted to be real about it and i wanted her to share even more about just that mindset that the, the frame of mind that it places you in the 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 the, the, the even some of the fear that, that, it, that it, it, it invokes on you just in everyday life and, 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 and how, how, how compassionate and how real it is about it. Give us a little bit more. But as a child, and I saw it from a child's perspective, it does. And it, it really, really puts a level of fear in you like you can't begin to describe. And you have to be careful because definitions are being created when you see these Good. kind of relationships Good. because you think about, Good. okay, is a part of, because like I said, right after all this type of abuse goes on you hear I love you then you see a, a moment where they come together and express love and then you know the woman succumbs to that and you're or just the looking like oh my, or the man and then you and then I look like I looked at it like okay is this a part of a relationship is this a part of love there's an aspect in it where you look like you hate each other and then at some point you come back together and express love so this is all a part of how relationships work and I just had to see something different, and I did. I went outside of my house, and I looked at my grandparents, and I looked at just my aunties and uncles, and I just saw all different kind of relationships. I didn't always, you know, I was always privy to being in their homes to see how it fully developed, but I knew it had to be something better. So I went even into looking out at the TV to see, you know, is there really uh, 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 something Brady positive much, that can come know, out of this of and it's scary because you do begin to grow up and you expect that to be a part of your relationship unless your views are changed or unless something else is put in you to let you know relationships are not supposed to work like this and it went on for years and when it builds up like that you really have to fight to figure out you know how or what do I want in a relationship and that's one of the things that that, that we want to target. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to do more than one session on this, but we're going to target how it shaped the view and the values and the qualities that we or she began to look in, look at in relationships because it's extremely important. Single man, single woman, um, children, even young children who inspire to be, uh, inspire to be uh, married one day. There's some criteria you got to look for. In other words, there's some things you got to look and make sure that whatever you're dealing with or whatever you're involved in, that you're making good choices, that you can live with the choices. And there are signs that you can see that you have to be extremely careful about. We're going to talk about them in this next um, segment. But I want you to know if you're watching us right now and you're dealing with, with those issues, first, pray. And, can, and, and, and do what you can. Yeah, you're in a relationship, but understand this. You're not the cause, and at some point, you have to make certain decisions about whether you're going to handle that or not, um, whether you choose to bring the, 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 the uh, authorities in or, or whether you choose to have a conversation and decide, okay, I can't take this, or whatever you have to do, you have to make those decisions. But know this, God is not punishing you. This is not something that you brought on yourself. I don't, I mean... And we, we, oftentimes we, 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 fem, we, we make it a feminine issue, but it's not just a feminine That's issue. Right. It's across the board. I mean, some men are literally being abused. Some children are being abused. And, and, and the violence happens on brother, I mean, siblings and, and all of those kinds yes. of things. And all of that is not, sometimes people think, 
I did this and I caused this and what happened? What did I do to make this happen as if God punished me and he put me in this situation? That's not necessarily the case. That's not the case. There are things that happen in all of our lives that are included in the classrooms of life, but God never meant for us to be abusive and, and for us to destroy each other and for families to be torn apart with this kind of thing. And so I'm glad that we're able to bring some level of attention that the church who doesn't always discuss certain issues because they're taboo, we have to take a stand that it's not okay to be dominated. It's not okay to be to be uh, marginalized and just handled and, and mis mishandled and, right. and abused and and we never say anything about it. And it's not the will of God. And and so it's important that. And I'm so glad that that in our relationship, in our personal relationship. There's so many things that have happened on my side of the table and her side of the table that we didn't, you know, we didn't initially know, but we're able to bring into our marriages and make it better and, and share with our children and yes. share with our families because everything doesn't happen from the pulpit. Mm -hmm. And that's what after church is really about. Mm -hmm. The things that happen outside of the pulpit, outside of the church doors that you, that are real life issues that we have to talk about and deal with and begin to work through and begin to bring a culture change in it because if you don't ever get to the core of the thing then your daughters and your sons and your and your friends and and, and so on and so forth are going to go through some of the same issues right. because nobody deals with them and so life is real their hurts their scars that people carry throughout their lives that didn't even happen in marital relationships it happened in, in boyfriend girlfriend relationships early before anybody ever got together right. those are some of the signs you have to look for and that's the next thing we're going to talk about but I, we wanted to initially give you just this few minutes to just share that as we recognize and we understand that this is also a, a month where not just shouldn't just be a month, it should be a lifetime where we, we, we bring awareness to domestic violence. Yes, but I want to pray right. with you even right now if you're going through it, yes. as even even in this after church session, that, that God would help you and give you direction and, yes. and, and bring you through it. And that, Father, we pray together right now yes. that in every marital relationship, in every kind of relationship, that your spirit would have authority. And we, yes. we bind and break the, the, the powers of violence and, and disruption and disagreement that would cause families to fall apart. We thank you that you've given us love. Perfect love casts out fear. Yes. You've given us a mature love and your, 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 your presence in it. And so we pray for those who are hurting, who are, who are abused and don't know which way yes. to turn, that you would now, Lord, give them comfort, give them strength to make the right decision, yes. to do the right things, and that you would bring peace and harmony for you. You are a peaceful and a loving God. You, you said marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. That's we want right. to honor marriage. We want to honor relationships, yes. our family relationships. Give us strength and give us clarity as to how to make them better. As yes. we start at the root of this, we thank you for your power and your grace in this matter help us lord help. we believe we believe that and we receive it in your precious name jesus amen amen i hope you've enjoyed this after church we're gonna come back to you and we're gonna go a little bit more into the details as far as relationships and single people and and all of that and different things you can look for to try to build proper relationships as we bring uh, awareness to domestic violence we want to bring awareness to the to domestic peace and how you can have domestic peace and a full family that enjoys and loves one another That's we right. thank you for tuning in with us today we'll be back with you soon prayerfully god bless you god bless and you. thank you lady marie for your transparency yes. We love we love y'all. Um, holler at us again. Thank you for joining us with After Church. After Church.